delighted to be here now today and uh, in the previous text we had discussed about how arjuna said that i just need to know what is the right thing to do now when we ask questions there are different kinds of questions we may ask oh that sometimes i was once in a plane i was driving and i was doing my some mantra meditation and somebody asked said i have a question for you i said can you wait for a few minutes i'm just completing my meditation he said okay and i finished out 15 minutes later he said okay yeah what's your question oh i forgot the question <laughs> so <laughs> so sometimes some people just have a casual question but some people have very serious questions so arjuna is driving home the gravity of his question over here by the statement that comes over here so he says nahi prapashyami mama panudyad yacho kamucho shanam indriyana avape bhuma vasaptanam mridham rajyam suranam api cha dipatyam so here arjuna is very forcefully making a key point in general life is such that we will all have some setbacks or others so if we are going on the path of life and there is some destination some goal some prize which is there at the end and while going on this path sometimes there are difficulties say there is a down then there is a up there is a down we seem to be so all these dualities are there on the path but quite often these downs these places where we are tough so we say that the is sometimes you it's worth it you know it was worth it at the end when we achieve something yeah all the trouble was worth this so so here in general if you consider this is the price and the downs which you have to face is the price what we have to pay so generally speaking for us the price has to be more than the price that what i am going to achieve is more than what i am going to give so for arjun as a warrior he is meant to fight and as in fighting victory is glorious so he is saying that even if i attain the greatest success in my path now those success can be in two forms one is kingdom on the earth if he wins the war he will attain an unrivaled kingdom on the earth and we will talk about a second trajectory a little later but if he dies if he dies a heroic death as a warrior he will attain heaven so we'll talk about the world view where this what is the role place of heaven is but it is both of them are considered great successes for a warrior but arjun is saying over here that neither of these are worth it so he's saying right now the emptiness that i'm experiencing this is the the chokam uchoshanam indriyanam he says there is a grief there is agony the angst that is drying up my senses it is making my very existence meaningless so he said that that this meaninglessness that is conveying very poetically very uh, articulately very eloquently this meaninglessness this emptiness is not going to be filled it's not going to be filled by gaining some possessions so quite often we tell people when somebody is having a tough phase come on push through it we will achieve this but if the goal itself becomes uninspiring the goal itself is it's not going to what's the point of it all what's when we start thinking like that then we just can't move forward so as for all of us the way we are born often our life path is set out for us okay now you get a good you get a good education then you get a good job then you get married you have a good family and then you do this 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 so we all have to some extent a life path set for us 
by society but there are times when this life path just doesn't seem to make any sense the biggest goals even the most cherished goals that we may have they just don't make any sense for us so this is the time when the, so through this arjuna is indicating the question he is having is not a casual question it is an existential question it is a question about casual about the very meaning and purpose and value of existence it's a very very consequential question for him casual question is okay if i get the answer good if i don't get the answer does not not a big difference rajinus question is in this category so that is the broad implication of this particular text why is this existential is that for him if existence basically means some kind of movement you now we always see ourselves as going somewhere in life okay, i am here this is where i would like to go but where we are going if that itself does not have any meaning then what is the point of existence itself so i am saying existential question means but he saying my my very life has no meaning when when this grief is drying up my senses that grief is leaving me feeling empty and hollow within myself so that is what saying that the grief is just sapping out the juice of existence whatever gives us the, the, the flavor the life the joy the juice of existence whatever it is is being sapped away by it. Mm-hmm. so in that sense arjuna is not not asking for a palliative some pain medication oh i am feeling bad how can i stop feeling bad people say okay just have a drink you know watch a nice movie you'll feel better and he say no this is much deeper a uh, uh, pal- no palliative no pain no painkiller is going to work over here so in one sense you could say that very good point here if you could because arjun he's taking the issue deeper see initially what we saw was arjuna was in emotional angst he couldn't hold his bow he was trem he was this horripilating he was not his mouth was throat was choking all the indication of emotional angst but he said i am not merely overcome by emotions there is a ethical crisis there is a ethical dilemma below this so sometimes emotions okay you just feel bad but it's it's much it's much deeper i just don't know what is the right thing to do and then if you go below the ethical there is a existential search itself in fact this is where krishna will go in answering this question so arjuna himself goes deeper over here this is it's not just i am feeling weak i am feeling bad so this mm-hmm. emotional to existential ethical arjuna is talking about this in especially in his 2.4 to 2.5 krishna says the anish krishna has said don't give in to this weakness uh, it is unbecoming of you krishna i am not being weak i am not being cowardly so i am very deeply concerned how can i kill my relatives how can i kill my guru and teacher it's it's ethical dilemma but now he is saying okay that i just don't know what is the right thing to do you know if i fight and when if i lose even neither of them seems to be good and even the best result that i might get out of this that is i i just get a unrivaled kingdom even that is doesn't seem to be worth it so especially this 2.7 to 8 it is indicating this way that he is going deeper from the ethical domain to the existential domain it's so you could say emotional angst means this doesn't feel good or i don't feel good mm-hmm. and i don't know what is good i'm using good in a more of a ethical or a ethical sense over here and then after that he is saying here especially you know what what is really good what really counts what matters in life Now, if if the attainment of heaven the attainment of of a unrivaled kingdom if that doesn't count then what really counts 
that's how he's asking and he's going deeper and deeper now the bhagavad gita in one sense the camera goes back when the camera is focused on krishna and arjuna from there it is going back now to sanjay and dhritarashtra so sanjay vacha eva muktva rishi kesham gudakesha parantapa nayotsyati govindam muktva tushnim babhuah in one sense arjuna has is in this particular text giving a categorical decision i shall not fight no you say to go win them but in addition to that he is he's falling silent over here so he's that is speech i won't fight after that there is silence so the point is when he is saying here i won't fight hmm no you see i won't fight i can't fight whichever you want to look at it he is indicating here this is a slightly different decision i won't fight or the mood over here is i need to know the answer so earlier so this in earlier also krishna arjuna had indicated i won't fight when he had put aside his bow as that was in 146 when he had said that he had cast aside his bow in grief that also was the same statement i won't fight in one sense but there it was more like a decision i won't fight here it was more of a resolution to wait for the answer hmm? it suppose somebody is sick hmm? somebody is sick with a possibly terribly sick with possibly terminal disease and they have almost lost hope and maybe they have to take some very difficult treatment like chemo and all its nausea and all the reactions are there so i won't take any treatment but then somebody tells them maybe there is some treatment available so but no i'm not just going to tell it because you recommended to me i need to understand how this is different hmm how this is different so one is just no treatment at all so that was arjuna in 146 but here it is no treatment till i understand till i understand how this is going to work what is this going to do so arjun is glorified over here by using two epithets epithets are glorificatory names used to refer to him so it is said that here the two names used for him are first gudakesh he is the conqueror of sleep now sleep or dream or ne- it all ign- indicates ignorance so he is saying that he is not a person he is a person who has conquered ignorance in the past he was such a tireless warrior that when he would practice archery all day he would learn from his teacher and all night practically he would practice archery so this indicates that he is going to conquer the current ignorance that is there he is not an ordinary person he is a special person and the other word is you that is is a chastiser of enemies so here an enemy of confusion enemy of doubt that has come over him so he will be overcoming that and so in this way the gita while sanjay is speaking he is using specific names which also are allusions pointers so that there is going to be illumination coming for arjuna so both of these are talking about arjuna's potential for enlightenment in the future he is basically ready to hear okay i am ready to wait i am ready to hear and in that sense he he is uh, showing his preparedness for receiving the answer तमुवाचरिषिकेशहसन्नीवारतसेनोर्भयोर्मध्येषीदंतमिदंवच 
in this text, the most striking word is smiling. So Krishna is smiling now. Generally, if two people are talking and say, if Arjuna, it was described Arjuna was in, in tears. That is mentioned right in this chapter itself in 2.1. Then when Arjuna is in tears, how can Krishna be smiling? So here the significance is that Krish, Krishna is smiling not at Arjuna's pain. And he's not smiling because Arjuna is in grief or is enjoying Arjuna's grief. Not at all. You see, sometimes when we are reacting, you know, it may seem that we are reacting to the particular particular action of the other person, particular condition of the other person. But that's not, Krishna is not reacting like that to that. Krishna is in one sense seeing the bigger picture. The bigger picture is what? That Arjuna was a friend, Arjuna was the warrior, and that friend has now become a student. It's a dramatic, unexpected change. It is that a uh, battlefield has now become a classroom. So sometimes life just throws such dramatic twists. At one level, we could be just shocked and aghast what's happening. But the very fact that something so dramatic has happened, and Krishna is especially smiling because now he has the opportunity to speak spiritual wisdom. The opportunity to speak wisdom for Arjuna's benefit and for the benefit of the whole world. So in one sense, the setting where Arjun and Krishna are in the middle of the battlefield. Senayor Ubayor Madhi, that's described. In the middle of the battlefield. That indicates that this discussion happened in a public setting. That this discussion was not meant to be private just among the, the two people. It was meant for the two of them, but it was also meant to be universal. So with the wisdom in the Gita is both specific for Arjuna and it is universal for all living beings. So Krishna will be speaking that wisdom and that dramatic change is what Krishna is smiling and appreciating. That's what he's smiling at, the big picture. So that is indicated in Sanskrit also that he appeared as if smiling. Prahasan Iva. Mm -hmm. He smiled and then he restrained himself. Hey, now this is a serious situation. Let's, let's, he uh, adopted the appropriate gravitas immediately. So there was a smile momentarily. Sometimes when we are talking with someone, why are you smiling? No, no, I'm not smiling. They, they make, there might be some, some thought in their mind, but maybe that's not appropriate to talk at that time. They just restrain the smile and move forward. So when Krishna starts speaking from the next verse, there will be a significant gravitas in what he will speak. So we just discussed three points today based on each of the word texts. So 2.8, I discussed how, you know, outer gain, it cannot compensate it for inner pain, especially inner emptiness. And that's what Arjuna is categorically declaring. So what is really meaningful for him? He wants to know that. And this is where we spend a lot of time, that the question has gone down from simply emotional it's not certainly not emotional, it's not just ethical. It has gone down to an existential level. What is really what makes existence meaningful? What is the point of living? And then two point and nine discussed about a little bit how Arjun, there is foreshadowing. Arjuna's intention is that Arjuna's determination to learn that is shown when he's saying, I am I won't fight, that means I'm going to wait. Till I know. And the epithets indicate in Arjuna's names, that they have certain foreshadowing that his weight is not going to be futile. He is going to gain the wisdom. Because he's a conqueror of sleep and he's a oh, conqueror of enemies. And then 2.10, we discussed how Krishna's mood it is, it's, it's initially as if smiling. Because a dramatic turn of events and he's appreciating that and then he will 
be eager to share wisdom for the world's edification thank you hey krishna